exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, I would say templates are only going to get you so far. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can't make so, sales with templates, uh, with formulaic copy, uh, with formulaic funnels. But what I will say is that you're not going to keep them very long. Uh here and welcome to the CEO spot. This is our interview playlist where we interview experts from around the world that are bringing you some great information in their field. And today is going to be a really fun one. I'm talking with Lee Rowley. Lee, welcome. We're excited to have you. Thank you. Glad to be here, Amy. Yeah, we're uh, today is going to be a good conversation. I am really excited for this one. Um, so Lee is an expert in creating sales copy. And here is when I heard this, I was like, I got to have him on the show. Um, he got really tired of being not great at sales copy. And I love when we can, we can recognize like, hey, I'm not doing what I really feel like I could. So he's been in sales copy for 10 years. But for about six of those, he felt pretty mediocre. He was using all the formulas that we all learn how to use and he was cranking it out and he was creating volume and copy that was just good enough, but not something that was really exceptional. And so after getting tired of it, he decided that he was going to break up with all of the formulas and the templates and really master the art of creating great copy that speaks to your brand, that um, captures the heart and soul of what you're doing and is effective in converting new clients. And when I heard that, I was like, I just want to shout some amen hallelujahs because I know I'm tired of reading it. I know I don't want to put it out. But I also don't necessarily know that I've landed in on, on what that new um, strategy is for creating amazing sales copy. So we're excited to have you. It's going to be a good conversation today. Absolutely. Awesome. So I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about your story of making that transition of realizing that you were cranking out average copy for people. Okay. Okay. Well, this may come as a surprise to you, but you know, I didn't grow up thinking, wow, I want to be a copywriter when I, get, when right. I grow up. You know, <laughs> it wasn't exactly on my radar. I, I actually spent uh, 10 years in the corporate world as a, as a compliance analyst for an insurance company, which is every bit as exciting as it sounds, right? Uh -huh. um, this, uh, to get out of that, I, I, I got into the, the copywriting field. Um, but, but the people that I learned copywriting from, uh, uh, one of them actually referred to his agency as the McDonald's of copywriting. Ooh, uh, it was all about high yeah, quality. Yeah. It's all about templates. It's all about fast. It's all about just good enough. And that was the, you know, that was what I learned. So like, that was all I really knew. Mm -hmm. uh, but it just, you know, as the, as the years wore on, I was just like, man, I just, I feel like I'm not doing a good job for my clients. I feel like I'm not putting my best foot forward. I don't feel like I'm creating the success for them that I should be, or for myself for that matter. Um, so you know, really what I did, I took an 18 month deep dive. I owned an agency at the time. So uh, you know, I went into to trying different, uh, different strategies to make a better connection with, uh, with, the, client, with the buyers, with mm -hmm. the prospects that you're trying to attract. Uh, and a lot of them really didn't work very well. I tried a lot of different things and, and you know, took workshops and seminars and everything and just really couldn't, couldn't hit on it. Uh, you know, what I finally realized was that, you know, stripping away all those rules and all those shoulds uh, and all this, this is how it has to be done, freed me to really write copy that connected on an emotional level uh, mm -hmm. and, and made clients or potential customers say, look, you get me, you know, and I want to do business with you because you get me. I don't care what other promises people are making. I don't care about, you know, false scarcity and countdown timers and all these tricks that, that are supposed to shove me through the door. You know, it's the connection that brought me in here. And, and that means that I'm going to stay loyal to you for life because you actually understand me and get me. Mm-hmm. 
So we did an interview recently with a very successful blogger, Jill Winger, and uh, she's been in the blogging world for eight years, which makes her the grandma of bloggers. <laughs> and she was talking about this exact same topic, how in the beginning, the reason these brands were so successful online was because of the level of connection, because mm -hmm. it was personable, because we were building a community, because I knew you and you knew me. And then we brought in all the funnels and all of the systems and it got very strategic and it got very disconnected and that's why you know so many people now are talking about you know the death of the blogs but really it's just that it, it's the death of I, I think what we're experiencing in business right now is not the death of funnels it's not the death of blogs it's not the death of influencers it's the death of this formulaic non-personal um, if I just plug you through the system, then you're going to pop out the other end. And I don't see it working that well for people also. You know, I, I think that that type of formula works really well for people who are teaching you how to do that formula. But I haven't seen anybody's funnels convert well in that model when they're selling something other than how to produce funnels. Right. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I, I would say templates are only going to get you so far. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can't make so, sales with templates, uh, with formulaic copy, uh, with formulaic funnels. But what I will say is that you're not going to keep them very long uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, there, there's that moment after you click the buy button where you go, man, I've been had. Mm. I just got suckered. And then, you know, the next time they come and say, you know, hey, do you want to buy this? Well, well, no, you know, you, you, you kind of backed me into a corner the first time. I don't want to buy it from you. Uh, you know, templates and, and the formulaic method of copy that we're using right now, you know, I, I, I liken it to, you know, a symphonic sheet music piece. I mean, like, you know, if you put uh, Mussorgsky's Night on Bald Mountain in front of somebody, they can play the notes. The notes are all there. Mm -hmm. The feeling is not. And mm -hmm. I say that you don't read copy, good copy, you feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's what okay. it's all about to me is it's not just the notes, uh, you know, the steps in the formula, if, you're, if we're relating that to a funnel. It's not really about the notes or the steps. It's about the connection and the emotion and the passion that goes into it. And that's what makes something truly powerful. I that's love it. Okay, so... We're kind of talking about what not to do, but let's talk about what to do. If you want to start creating better copy that really attracts in the right kind of client in a way that feels good to them, what are some tips that you have that will help them to get started on that journey? First, it needs to be conversational. Uh, you are creating a conversation here and not just shouting at them from an ivory tower. So your, your tone your word choices all need to be consistent and they need to be relatable uh, and accessible to your target audience. Uh, there's, there's so many of marketers out there who uh, say, you know, look at me, look all I've done, look at all the credentials I have, look at all the, the certifications and the books I've written and all these wonderful things I've done, me, 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 me. It, like I say, it's, it's like shouting at somebody from an ivory tower and, and they're not gonna connect that way. You know, it's, it's by speaking a little bit above them, not much, just enough to convey that you've got authority. So, you know, how do you do that, though? I do it by actually going into social media, into listening to people in person and finding out what they're really talking about and how they talk, what words mm -hmm. and phrases they use. Uh, you know, I, I, it drives me nuts when I get a client come in and, and they show me their client avatar and it's like, Oh, well, you know, my client avatar, their name's Cheryl, they're 53, they got 2.5 kids and a dog named Sparky, they live in the suburbs, they wish they could do this, I could do that. It's like, where did you get all this information from? And I have yet to get an acceptable answer out of that. It's just kind of mm -hmm. a, they look in the mirror and they think, well, this is what I'd want to hear if, if I mm -hmm. were in their shoes. Or they've had a handful of clients and it's like, okay, well, this is what I know about them. So this, what might be, this must be true for everybody in my niche. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. And that's the biggest thing that people are missing when, they, when it comes to writing effective marketing messaging is diving in and finding out what people are really talking about. I've used actual snippets from phrases that I've found in Amazon reviews, in mm -hmm. Facebook groups, in YouTube comments, you know, all these different places. 
where somebody has said something that really resonated and you know mm -hmm. you can tell that like this is their pain point this is right they're speaking from pure ungated authenticity here and you know i've taken that and, and worked that into headlines that have just absolutely crushed it you know they're they're not really my words they're not really my my sentiments so to speak mm -hmm. but well, i'm not I'm, showing you me i'm showing you you what i love about this is this is a an in-person sales technique that you're using which is where you know it's so funny when people struggle with closing sales i'm like really you just got to learn to listen mm -hmm. hear what they're saying and then repeat back to them what they just said to you and they'll be like oh my gosh you get me you right. just understand me because <laughs> so many people they're not heard they're not listened to and when you know when they're inside of their own heads all these problems seem so inter you know unconnected and just random but right. when they share them with you and you listen you take note of them and then you use those words back with them and say so what i'm hearing the problem is they're like yes you get me and you're doing that same thing in the online sales world so instead of anticipating and me telling you what your problem is you're doing the research to go and find what are the people talking about what's the word on the streets and then mm -hmm. using that and integrating that in that's right. so simple why did we not think of that sooner it, mostly because <laughs> it is too simple i mean it's something that i've done instinctively for years and and uh -huh. when i started having people uh, clients say, you know, hey, can you create a course? Mostly because they feel like there's not enough of me to go around and they want me to teach other people how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's why I went down this path. And then, you know, the hardest part for me was unpacking what I do every day because to me, it just becomes so, uh, you know, so instinctive that I just, you know, I, I forget it. And, you know, teaching it to other people has been a huge challenge. And to me, it's mm -hmm. been very rewarding. Uh, I, I go a step farther, and the reason that I like to go into social media is, is simply this. I, I, I feel like there's two kinds of feedback. There's gated feedback and ungated feedback. Mm -hmm. If you ask somebody what they want, which is what all the gurus tell you to do, right? If you want to know what to create, go ask your audience. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you what they think you want to hear. They're going mm -hmm. to tell, tell you things based on, uh, you know, not wanting to sound stupid. They're wanting, they're wanting to sound more informed. They're wanting to not hurt your feelings. Right. You know, so you're getting this gated, filtered feedback. Uh, whereas if, if you're spying, I hate to use the word spying, but what the heck, you know, when people through social media or just you know, eavesdropping in public or whatever, you're getting ungated feedback. You're getting what they're talking about when they think you're not listening. And mm -hmm. that's real, that's authentic, and that's powerful. So it sounds like your strategy is to start with the problems and then you figure out, you know, now we know what the problem is. Now we're going to build the strategy that takes them to the solution. Do you have, I know you, you don't want the templates and you don't want the formulas, but there always is a formula, even if it's kind of the anti-formula, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. you, I feel like you're kind of the anti-formula guy where you're going to, you have your own methodology that you go through, but you're bucking against the formula that they see all the time. Mm -hmm. So they don't tune you out and you actually get into, into their mind and into their heart. So when you're writing a campaign, for example, how do you determine how many emails should be in that campaign as you're trying to take them from problem into the solution? Okay. A lot of it has to do with problem awareness and solution awareness. And that's mm -hmm. obviously not mine. You know, Michael Masterson covered that quite adequately in Great Leads, and that wasn't even his to begin with. Okay. Uh, but, but uh, you know, assessing where they are on that scale of problem awareness and solution awareness has a, plays a lot into how much you, information you have to give them and how long that journey has to be to take them mm -hmm. from not having a solution to solving the problem. Right. So that, that's the main thing that I, that I use. I mean, it, it, it depends somewhat on the niche too uh, and what you're hearing people say in, you know, Facebook groups and in, mm -hmm. in, you know, Amazon reviews for you know, how they, how, what they liked about a product or book or what they didn't like about it, what they wish they had, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of those things play into it, but mostly it's just, you know, are, how aware are they of their, that they even have a problem to begin with. Right. And how okay. aware are they that the solution is available? Okay. And once you are asking for that sale and asking for the close, I know you said you don't like 
the, the scarcity timer going off, but how do you create that motivation to make them want to take action without scarcity? Okay. Well, I don't think that scarcity is necessarily a bad thing. I just, it needs to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. I agree with that. You know, two yeah. days until it's not there, but really <laughs> the same offer, you know, if you right. click on that link anytime. Right. Get, download your ebook, only 30 copies left. Wait a minute, what? Why would you only have 30 copies of an ebook, right? right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, the thing is, is that false attempts to create scarcity stick out like a sore thumb. So I, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's not that necessarily that I never use scarcity. It's just that it has to be honest and authentic. Mm -hmm. um, one big thing for me is future casting. Uh, like, okay, here's what your life is going to look like five years from now or a year from now or six months from now mm -hmm. if you choose to do nothing. And if, if you choose to do nothing and that's where you end up six months from now, well, you know, hey, that's your choice. And I'm not going to judge you from that. But, you know, if you're tired of living with that, you don't want to be in the same position or worse six months from now or a year from now that you are today, then the time to get started is now. Mm, I love that. That's a, that's a traditional sales technique as well, yeah. because you know, most people look at purchasing incorrectly. They look at it according to what's the cost of the solution mm -hmm. instead of looking at what's the cost of the problem. And if I stay with this problem, what is it going to cost me? Because I tell you that cost of the problem is always higher than the cost of the solution. Right. And, but, but people don't naturally look at it that way. They look at it and they go, well, what's the number? Yes or no. And they don't assess that value of what is it costing me to stay where I am? Am I okay with that? If I don't do this, am I likely to change the problem that I have? How long is it going to take me? And would I be good with in six months being at the same place where I am now? Right. Um, so I love that you're bringing that in because we just aren't, we are not trained to think that way. You know, I think from the time we're small, when we're purchasing, even my first experiences in making any purchases by myself, my family would walk to uh, the Circle K in the summertime and my mom would give us, and it was just the kids, that was back before danger was invented. So we would walk down the road and she would give us each a certain amount of coins and you would look in there and you would make your purchases not based on what you wanted, but on the 50 cents that you had in your pocket, you know, and, and that was how we learned to buy. And so I think we were all trained to buy um, from the wrong space, from looking at what's the cost, can I afford it, yes or no? But then we end up with a lot of buying mistakes that don't necessarily fit what we wanted and aren't necessarily helping us move forward. So you're really, you know, you're taking these uh, techniques that we use in person to person sales and you're making copy that's gonna sell to groups, but in a really personal way. And I love that, I think that's beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Great work uncovering this. I feel like you were a little detective that went digging for secrets and found them. <laughs> I will be honest with you. If I sit down and write a, a sales page, for example, and mm -hmm. I've allotted 10 hours to own it, uh, I'm going to spend probably seven of those hours digging, sleuthing, mm -hmm. you know, uncovering. Mm -hmm. uh, because once you do that, the rest of it, is like butter. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I have, I have clients all the time and I do, I train people to write their own copy because I say that I'm the second best copywriter you could ever hire. You're the first right. because you have the passion, you understand your audience's needs and that shows through, you know, again, you feel good copy. And mm -hmm. you know, if it's coming from a person who's passionate about solving your problems, that shows through, uh, you know, but it's, you know, I, if, you can do that and you can do it effectively, then you, know, you don't really need a copywriter and you're, mm -hmm. and you're not sitting in front of a blank screen for hours on end going, oh, God, what do I write? What do I say to these people? You know, because you've got, you've got a full understanding of your avatar, of your ideal buyer, and you're just creating a conversation from there. Yeah. Well, and the other piece of that too is once your business does get to the point where you need to hire out copywriting just because of scalability, mm -hmm. um, you'll have a system where somebody else can write and it still sounds like you. So um, I, I think that's really important. When my clients are at that point where they're like, I want to hire a copywriter, my first thing is, have you written enough that the copywriter is going to even be able to get a feel for your voice? Because if you haven't done any communicating with your audience, 
the copywriter is going to come in and they're going to sound like them instead of sounding like you. So you do have to go through that phase first. Well, this has been a really great conversation. I know we're just about out of time, uh, but I would love to just have you share where can they go to learn more about you? What's the best place to get connected, connected in your space and learn your uh, ninja sales copy secrets? Absolutely. Well, uh, at the beginning of October, I opened Sales Copy Academy, and that is a full 12 month program uh, designed to help coaches, consultants, artists, and other brand preneurs uh, develop the copy that they need to really crush it with their businesses. Uh, that's at salescopyacademy.com. Uh, if you just wanted to learn more about me in general, for some strange reason, you can go to leerolly.com. It's lee, R-O-W-L-E-Y.com. And uh, I'm developing some, some other uh, opportunities for brand printers to learn copy as well uh, that require a little less of a commitment than the, than the full one-year Sales Copy Academy program. Uh, so look forward to that too in the coming months. Awesome. Well, Lee, we so appreciate you coming on and sharing with us some of your ninja secret detective tips that help people write amazing copy. Um, and for all of you that are listening, make sure that you subscribe to the channel because we have a lot of great interviews with other industry experts that will help you to grow your business. And if you know somebody who could use some support in creating better copy, share this video with them. Um, do it nicely because that could be one of those things like, hey, by the way, your hair looks really bad. Let me give you the card for my stylist. So you gotta do it gently. You gotta be a little bit nice about that. Um, but we hope that you'll, you'll share this content out, subscribe to the channel, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Good luck building your business and we are here to cheer you on. Lee, thanks so much for being on with us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, it was always a pleasure.